Hi, I'm Robert Esther at livingpianos.com. Viewer question time here again. And I've got answers for you. The first one is from Gary. Gary says, I've been enjoying and trying to read and listen to all of your blog contents on various subjects. I really enjoy them and I'm learning a great deal from them. I've been offered a good quality 1988 Busendorfer 225 piano with a good history from a reputable dealer, William Bruno Santos in the Dallas area. Bruno generally deals in Steinways principally for nonprofit institutional sales. This piano is a 15 16th keyboard. I understand Busendorfer only made three of these at the, in their entire history. I have smaller hands, so I could probably play and enjoy this piano. My question is, is this an orphan piano that I should shy away from and avoid that would be hard to resell someday? Or is this shorter keyboard with a slightly smaller keys just as suitable and resellable as any other piano? I guess I might suggest a living piano video explaining what a 15, 16 keyboard actually is for those who are not familiar with the term. Thanks, I love your living piano videos, Gary. All right, Gary, we're here you got it in a video and everything. You know, um, this is a great question. Now, some historical context I think is in order. The great 20th century pianist Joseph Hoffman who was called the greatest pianist of the 20th century by Sergei Rachmaninoff, who also <laughs> was considered the greatest pianist of the 20th century by Joseph Hoffman. It was kind of a, a uh, complimentary rivalry that they had. Well, Joseph Hoffman, unlike Rachmaninoff, who had enormous hands, Joseph Hoffman had tiny hands. So small, in fact, that Steinway built him a special seven-foot piano with smaller reach, smaller keys, that he used whenever he could in concerts. Naturally, he couldn't use them everywhere he played, but he did practice on that piano. Now, today, flash forward, the small American company that started in the 1970s, Charles Walter, maker of very fine pianos, who still produces maybe just a handful of pianos every year, about 50 pianos. And anyway, he is now offering some of his pianos with smaller keyboards, once again, in two different sizes for people who have difficulty with reaches, big reaches, which is, a, by the way, a very important subject that I'm going to cover in a, yet another video because, yes, I have very small hands and I've had to learn special techniques to be able to play works that have reaches beyond what I can reach, breaking chords and such. But wouldn't it be great to have a smaller keyboard? So your question, is this piano going to be some difficult instrument to resell because of its strange nature? Well, if this was 15, 20 years ago, I'd say, you know, that could be tough. How are you going to ever connect with somebody who might be interested in such an instrument? But in this age of the internet, there's bound to be somebody out there seeking out a piano with a smaller keyboard. And if you market it correctly with various websites, people will probably find you. And if you ever want to sell it, definitely contact me because I know lots of people who would appreciate an instrument like that. And I wish more manufacturers would offer this smaller keyboard for people like us with smaller hands. So I wouldn't be afraid of the piano. And particularly if your primary reason for buying it is to hold on to it for a long time. Enjoy yourself if you connect with the instrument. Thanks so much for the question and all the questions coming in. I'll make every effort to answer as many of them possible on these personal videos for you. Again, I am Robert Estrin, livingpianos.com. I'll see you next time.